Rochelle White as usual. Good evening. Nice to see you again. Mesonge. Benita. Welcome. Victor. Thank you, Victor. Atsenga, welcome. As you are coming in, could you quickly go and share the share Gufatumo? Please go share the link as you are coming in. Princess Remileko, welcome, welcome, welcome. Another princess, Sunshine. Welcome, everyone. Shade Disu, welcome. There is somebody that is just entering right now into the room and you are having problem with infections, infections in your ears. That's scary, rather strange, right? But infections in your ears as if some insects or some, yeah, some germs are in your, in your ears. So the infections of the ears, if you are the one, uh, God wants to take care of that infection. God wants to heal that person. So, uh, you know, put your hand on yourself and receive your healing by yourself. In Jesus' name. So, um, yeah, receive that healing from God. Okay. Now, if you are here and you have not yet shared the link, the link to this message, go ahead and share it. Go ahead and invite your friends. Invite uh, even your enemies. Let them come. Today's message is going to be quite fascinating and interesting uh, because uh, we're going to be talking about paganism and truth. And I want to prove to you today that uh, uh, paganism is now in our church. So that person that I said is having challenge in the ears, you know, your particular situation is the left ear. So receive your healing for that for that place. And another person is having problem with the elbow. It's like you touch you touch the string of your elbow, elbow or something like that. I think it's the right hand. God is touching that person. God is healing you. And that, you know maybe you know there is an anointing here today that wants to touch people with, with for healing. So if you are here today and you think you have some you know some needs especially in pertaining to your health. Can you just release your faith and believe God for that? And uh, God is touching you right now in Jesus' name. There is another person that is praying for someone that has psychiatric or psychiatric situation, mental situation, like uh, schizophrenic situation. So in Jesus' name, we agree with you and we release the healing of God upon that person in Jesus' name. Another person that is having challenge with a heart, you have a heart problem. From time to time, you you have this pain in your heart, and I mean you are the verge of a heart attack. Uh, God is healing that person, uh, so you know you know touch yourself and release your faith in God and let God touch you. Another person that is having some, uh, I, I can't quite get what that is in your forehead, but in your forehead area, you have a problem in your forehead area. God is touching you as well. So, and uh, a lady that is having a lump in the breast, uh, so believe God and touch, let, you know, touch yourself and let God remove that thing from you right now. Another person that is having arthritis of the fingers, God is touching you and healing you now. Uh, a man, a man, a male that is having challenges in his private part of the body, God is healing you right now. Well, your Mia Dedeji is just writing immediately that uh the situation i mentioned is for him he said wow pastor it is my left ear oh i receive a healing right now <laughs> yeah because i was talking about the ears and and i god just told me that the person you know didn't catch it that i should mention the left ear in particular so that's what i did well another another person that's having problem you know, what do you call that ulcer ulcer if you are having ulcer god is uh touching you right now as well you would not need to you know all those medications you know that have not been helping uh you will not need to you will not need them anymore god is going to tell you i mean heal you right now you're amazing wow 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 this is real oh. yeah because there is <laughs> you see whenever you see anything fake whenever you see satan trying to fake anything 
it is because there is the original, there, there is the reality, the original of it, uh, that Satan, you know, is trying to duplicate and trying to mess up. You see, there is the real power of God and there is the real gift of the Spirit. But unfortunately, people go, you know, because they don't want to pay the price to walk with God and to walk in, in truth. And they, they would rather go and, you know, you know, compromise and use their biblical powers or they would go and um, be using extrasensoric, you know, power or things like that. It's just a pity, uh, you know, but uh, if you are here today, you know, just, you just receive what you need. It doesn't have to be healing. So anything you are believing God for right now, we are agreeing with you in faith. And, uh, you know, I don't know why God decided to move this way today, but, uh, you know, I'm agreeing with you by faith for anything that you are in need of. Uh, and uh, we proclaim healing for you in Jesus' name. Well, Princess Sunshine, she, I think he's, she's here. I don't know if it's for the first time or not. She said she was the one having the situation with the ulcer. Well, you are getting your ulcer removed in the name of Jesus right now. So, and you are going to do it, you know, without stress, without any offering. <laughs> God is going to do it without any offering, without any tithe and offering, without any money to the prophet, without prophet offering, without, uh, is it prophet offering, what is it, the faith offering and, you know, without uh, $28 on the eighth day of January or whatever. You know, another person that is having lump in the, in the right breast, God is taking care of that lump as well. God is taking care of it. Yes, another person that is having pro skin problem. You have problem with your skin. Uh, what is that? It's not quite skin cancer, but it's a challenge with your skin. It's not good. And, uh, you know, it's like your skin is, uh, is uh, yeah, but you know what I'm talking about, especially in the areas of your hands. God is healing that in the name of Jesus. Uh, <laughs> uh, somebody is writing <laughs> Okiki, Okiki, Ola, Okiki, say, I, I, your day, <laughs> So you are one of those paid to do the arrangement. <laughs> well, that is going to be tougher <laughs> because how can he be paid when like, there is no interest, no money coming? You are not getting the, in those places where people are paid is because they need you to give offering. But here there is no offering, no gain for me. So it can, I cannot be paid. I've never met him. <laughs> so he cannot be paid to do it for just for nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but God is real. God is real. And uh, that's just for you to know that God is for real. God is for real. But, you know, the person that it needs to get the healing right now is the person that is having this mental attack. So if you are here, either you yourself, you are having a mental attack or you are praying for somebody like that or, or you've been in the psychiatric hospital before, you've been treated for that disease. Okay, now got, the person got it. The person got it. Yes, just, just receive your healing. You are not going to have that mental uh, psychiatric situation anymore in the name of Jesus. That's it. It's gone. It's gone. So thank God for it. Okay. Well, today's teaching is going to be very, very interesting. It's going to be very, very serious and very, very demanding, very, very interesting. And I'm uh, asking you if you have not yet shared the link. The volume is low, okay? Uh, let's try the microphone and see. If, if you have not yet shared the link, then uh, please go ahead and do it. And uh, let's see how that works. Go ahead and share the link as fast as possible. And uh, right now, I'm, I want to start today's session by reading a letter to you. One of the letters that I receive, there is this person that uh, wrote me from England. Let's put it as fast as possible and see. That is the back. Okay, I hope it's better now. I hope the, 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 the volume should be better now. I hope it's better now. So I want to start uh, this session by reading a letter that I got from... <laughs> yep. Okay, let me read what uh, Yomi is saying for... This is real. Pastor mentioned two real accurate cases of mine. My left here was half blocked for some weeks now, and today I just woke up with a chest pain. Thank God for the word of knowledge. Yep, you know, God is real. 
Okay, volume is better now. Okay, yeah, we put some micro, we put a microphone. Okay, I, I got a letter from England from one of the leaders, church, a big church leader in England, uh, you know, which is a good sign. But it's a Nigerian uh, who's moved to England and he's been listening to my message. Maybe he's here right now. I'm not going to mention the name or his church or ministry. But what he has written is this. I have been very privileged to follow all your teachings about paganism in the church of God, particularly in Nigeria and Africa, African churches. We, that is himself and his wife, uh, are privileged to witness this type of enlightenment, liberation and empowerment of God's people in our own time. We, may the grace of God continue to overshadow you, sir. Then he goes on to say, over here in the UK, I have a big responsibility because it's big over here. He's a leader in one of a big, in a major denomination right there. But I need to tap into your anointing and learn from you about practical Christianity. I think it's more about learning from me than tapping into the anointing, I guess. So I need to, uh, I want to learn from you practical Christianity, right? Christianity is dying rapidly in the UK. And it's true. That's what everybody knows if you have been in the UK. Christianity is dying rapidly in the UK. And the brand of church or Christianity brought from Africa to the UK, from Nigeria, uh, and African churches are exactly what you have been talking about since last week. <laughs> that is pure paganism. And unsurprisingly, the whites are not buying into it. So it's been African churches for African people abroad. Now, that's what I'm going to start with. For the people who are saying that I've lost my mind, <laughs> then they have to know that I've lost my mind for a long time, a long time ago. And it's because I've lost my mind that I've not been like one of these African churches. You see, I've lost my mind so much that uh, I've been able to make impression where all African churches have not been able to penetrate. You know, we have so many African churches here in this, in my country here in Ukraine, we are trying to do something, but only black people go there. So why is it that just black people, you know, the gospel that is coming from Africa is only able to affect black people? And white people are not being affected. But the gospel that Pastor Sunday preaches, even though he is also from Africa, it cuts across the board. So how is it that I've lost my mind or I'm crazy and I'm not the only one that is able to affect both the black, the Asians and the Europeans and the white and the Americans and the Germans and the English, everybody. In fact, it's not only in the church world that the gospel that I bring affects people. It's able to affect people in politics, in government. Why is it that I'm the only black man from Africa who has spoken in the United, United States Senate? Because I'm crazy, right? Because I've got something wrong. Why is it that our big men of God who, who are having the big you know, names and the big empires, why is it that they are not known over there as much? And why is it that they will not be invited to the parliament to talk? I mean, to the, to the Senate to talk or to teach in the United Nations? Even if they are invited there, it's, you know, you know, you see the difference that, uh, you know, and if you go to any country, you don't see my, you know, you don't, it's not just full of black people. My church, where our church is, we have churches in 50 countries, and you will see the local people there. Mainly the people who live in that country are there. So I think it's better for people who are challenging me, or people who are listening here, to give enlightenment to the biography of Pastor Sunday. Maybe we actually need to put a link to that biography here, or put uh, uh, something. Because, you know, people need to know who Pastor Sunday is and what he has done. Crazy man, crazy people don't just become the most successful black person in the history of European Christianity. It doesn't just happen that a crazy man will have that kind of result. A crazy man will not, you know, have 90% of white people, 98% of white people following him. And you know, if, if you have been to Europe, you will know that white people, they don't follow black people easily. And you will know that white people actually think that they are superior to, white, to black people. Another thing is that you will discover that white people, they think about everything. And they criticize everything. And they analyze everything. Okay, then you could say, oh, it's because it's white people in Ukraine. Well, you have other, you know, the Nigerians in Ukraine. And you have other people from all these denominations here. Why are they not making the same effect with the same Ukrainian? Okay, why did I have the same effect with 
in Sweden? Why do I have the same effect in, in Denmark? Why do I have the same effect in, 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 in Norway? Why do I have the same effect in Germany? Why do I have the same effect in America? Over white people in Australia, in New Zealand. Why? Not just Ukraine. So it means that maybe you need to listen to me. Maybe there is something that I'm bringing to the table. Maybe there is sense. In fact, I think I need to make, or maybe you will need to cut out this particular aspect of the video and put it out there somewhere because people need to know this particular. And I want to invite, I invite everybody and anybody that wants to do this, please go ahead and cut this particular aspect of the video and put it out there and let people know that crazy people don't just have this kind of result. Maybe I'm not the one who is crazy after all. Maybe I might be right in some things. <laughs> Maybe it is our continent that got it wrong. Why is it that our gospel only affects our own culture? Why is it that our own gospel only attracts our people from Africa, our people who are black? Why is it that our own gospel only at at attracts people in problems? Even if they are white people, only white people in problems. <laughs> why is it that our own gospel, the, our own anointing, all our own, our own miracle power, why is it that it doesn't work when you come to Europe? It only works in Africa. <laughs> why is it that our own gospel, you know, is only, it's limited? <laughs> and now I'm talking, and you are saying that man, somebody, I read somebody's comments yesterday. Somebody said, ah, this, oh, ah, it's a pity of Pastor Sunday. Ah, we need to pray for him. Ah, the guy is lost. <laughs> I said, he doesn't even know me. I said, he didn't even know that I'd only be like this. <laughs> and the thing that he's, he was praising me for, the thing he talked, because they were only hearing of the success of Pastor Sunday. But they were not hearing of the battles of Pastor Sunday. They were only hearing of the big church. A Nigerian pastor in a big church, the bigger church in Europe. But they didn't know the truth, the process. And they didn't know who is that black man. What is behind him? What is his secret? Now that we are getting to know and we are getting to meet that person, you don't like, we don't like what we see. It's just like with Jesus. You like what you, the result, but you don't like the person, the carrier of the result. It's just like with Jesus. If Jesus will come today, we will, some, of us, we, some of us will chase him out from our churches. In fact, he will not qualify to be a member of our church because we are so departed from the ways and the path of Jesus. So for people to say that Pastor Sunday is, uh, is, is, is lost his mind or is backsliding, it is the backsliding that made me to have the same impact that I'm having. That nobody else has been able to have. It is the backsliding then that is making me to be able to do what no Nigerian or no African has ever done in this continent. It is the backsliding then. This my this gospel without pollution, the, the the reliance of the on the on the Bible and the truth of God that has made me to be a flag bearer of the of the of the African gospel and the and the and the you know and the African Af African continent. Because this, what this man is saying here is right. And please, let's go ahead and share the, let's go ahead and share the, the, the link, please. If you have not yet shared the link, please go ahead and share the link. Go ahead and share the link. So when I'm talking about the fact that we don't need paganism in the church, Christianity could, could be successful without all the paganistic practice. I know what I'm talking about because I've done it. I've built a church which is one of the most, one of the greatest churches in the world, one of the most successful churches in the world, I've built it without all the paganistic manipulations and, and you know, and uh, pollutions. I've built a church in Europe, in the most difficult place in Europe, without the Babalawo, you know, concept of Christianity, without the voodoo concept of Christianity. Without all the, I don't know, the, the, without all the, the, the manipulations and deceptions, without all the noise and the bravados and the deceptions and the fake miracles and the, you know, arranged miracles and testimonies. Without the ESP. In fact, I've preached the gospel in the place where ESP, yeah, as far as sensory perception, is most popular. 
And this gospel, this gospel of the kingdom has chased them out of town. So it's not that I've lost my mind. I've not lost my mind. It is we who think that because that's the only thing we have seen, because the only kind of Christianity we have seen in Nigeria is just what is available in our environment. So we think that's the only correct thing. So now that somebody is coming with a fresh voice and with a fresh perspective to the gospel, we are saying that he is bashing people because he's speaking the truth, because we are not used to speaking the truth. But why are we afraid of the truth? If we are light, if we are walking in the light, we shouldn't be afraid of the truth. The only thing that I know is, you know, the only people that I know should be afraid of the truth are the people who are living in darkness. Because the truth is light, it will expose all kind of darkness. So, I'm sorry that I have to talk like that, you know, but you, you should see, Paul also, we talk like that sometimes. We say, you know, you know, I will have to talk about myself sometimes. I will have to brag about myself and my achievement because, you know, otherwise... You know, it's like people don't know. But I'm not bragging. I'm just giving a report. It's out there. What I've done and who is Pastor Sunday. So, and I've done it not in my own backyard. I've done it not in the place where it is easy to do. So, if you want to say, okay, you come to Africa and do it. Well, when I come, to, if I come to Africa, I pray that God will not ask me to do church because that is the best way play thing to, that will happen to all, all the, the churches that are there right now. That God would not tell me to do church. Because if God tells me to do church, that is tragedy for a lot of people where they are right now. Because, I, that, like I've said the other day, that in Africa you can build a church of a million people without even God be appearing at all. Just manipulate people like people are doing right now. I mean, a lot of con artists that are pastors that are bragging that they have a million people, or half a million people you know, following them, and they are con artists, real. They don't even have an idea of God. They are just show men and they are gathering millions. It's a pity. And that's why we must speak out against the things that are going on in the African church and, you know, blow the trumpet of truth and let the truth set our continent free. So, Father, I pray that you will touch your people today. Speak through your servant. Let your word and your voice come clear and distinct. And let people hear you clearly. And let that word penetrate to the bones and marrows of your people. And let your word set your people free. And let your children be able to carry your banner high. And glorify your name everywhere you put them. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Today's message is. In paganism, truth is subjective. Why in Christianity, truth is absolute. Ha, ah, my God. If you have not listened to my series on truth, if you have not listened to my series on truth, <laughs> then you have not listened to Pastor Sunday. You haven't listened to me at all, at all. So write it down. Write my, add my uh, channel down. Sunday Adelaide Official. Sunday Adelaide Official on YouTube. Go on YouTube. And look for Sunday Adelaide Official. Sunday Adelaide Official on YouTube. And when you get there, look through, the, go to the homepage. And in the homepage, you will see different kind of uh, series. Or oh, One of the last series is uh, the series on truth. The power and force of truth is called. You want to listen to the whole thing there because it's so crucial. So it is from some of these things I've mentioned them in that series. And so, uh, but, um, you know, I'm going to be mentioning, uh, uh, that, that is a series where I've spoken like 100 hours. I think I have about 50 messages there or 40 something messages on truth. So today is just going to be a quick run, right? But it's such a, uh, an important, an important word today. Now, I just pray that God will help me to communicate this because it's so important. Now, in, in paganism, truth is subjective. There is no concept. Remember this. There is no... And also, let me make another announcement. There are a lot of people who are saying, when am I having some program in Ukraine? I want to let you know that the next program we're having in Ukraine is in November. So you want to write this down. November 6th... No, let's say 5th to 12th. 5th to 12th. You know, talking about when you fly in, when you're going. But you could stay in... You can come earlier and you can stay in longer just as you wish. But it's going to be in November uh, 5th to 12th. Uh, and that is what we call, that's when we are going to have what we call HMT, 
history makers trading. So any one of you are asking, when could you come to Ukraine? Would you like to come to see me? Well, that's a good time, especially when you, if you want to come for the training. Uh, it is November. So for you to register, just go to Su Sunday Adelaja Official. We might, somebody might need to write my blog. So not official. Official is the YouTube. But this one is my blog. SundayAdelajaBlog.com Slash visit. SundayAdelajaBlog.com Slash visit. So if you go to visit, you could register for the History Makers training. All right. The topic of today again is truth is in paganism, the, the truth is subjective. What does that mean that truth is subjective? That means that there is no concept of truth, no solidity, no solidity of truth, no concreteness of truth in paganism. In paganism, truth is abstract. In paganism, truth is not objective. Truth is subjective. In pe paganism, doesn't value truth. In paganism, truth is not at the cornerstone. Truth is not the foundation of religion in paganism. Truth is not important. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that Satan, your father, is a liar. Your father lied from the beginning and is the father of lies. And that is Satan. Satan is the root of paganism. And Satan is a deceiver and a liar. So truth is not in the is not valued in paganism. In paganism, deception, lies, and manipulation is the order of the day. So why am I talking about that? Because what we now see in the Nigerian churches is reminding you of, and me more of paganism than Christianity. Because if you go to the African churches today, or to the Nigeria or African churches, or Pentecostal, Pentecostal charismatic churches of Africa, you will discover that so much deception is hidden there, so much lies, so much manipulation, it has almost become institutionalized. Everybody is covering one another. Everybody is hiding something. Things are hidden. You know, manipulation, deception is just the order of the day in the African church of today that we have today. Lies, deception is more like what Jesus saw when he came and he confronted the Pharisees. The church of Nigeria today doesn't also, just like in paganism, the church of Nigeria today does not have an idea, a concept, a, a well thought out concept of truth. As a matter of fact, I don't know if there is any single church in Nigeria today where there is a doctrine on truth. As a matter of I'm telling you the truth, and you might know this, if you will, you know, con conduct a survey among Nigerian Christians today, the only two passages they will tell you about the truth that they know in the whole of Bible and Christianity, to them is just when Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And then you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. But if you ask them, what does that mean? How does that work? How do practically does that operate? They don't have an idea. <laughs> Apart from those two scriptures about the truth, you know, 90% of people who go to churches in Nigeria and in Africa, they don't know what truth is. Why? Because they have not been taught about truth. In fact, if you tell them what I'm going to say today, that it, Jesus said, it is for the sake of truth that I came. I came to testify to the truth. So the whole purpose of Jesus coming to the earth is for the truth and around the truth. In fact, a lot of Nigerians will be shocked. Maybe one of them or two of them could still remember, you know, and say that, okay, those who worship God, in, in, you must worship God in, in, in spirit and in truth. That might be the only third scripture they might remember. Because, but and what that means, that scripture is talking about that there is no worship of God without truth. So anywhere, any church where there is no concept of truth and where there is no definition of truth, there is no worship of God. Because no human being can worship this our God without worshiping him in spirit and in truth. In fact, the only way to worship this God is in truth. Not just in truth by being honest, though, but the whole concept, the whole totality of truth. So if the whole group of Christians or congregation don't even know the concept of truth, how can they worship in truth? So if you are not in truth, you cannot worship this God. If you are not in truth, you cannot know this God. 
If you have not been taught about truth, if you are not established in truth, you don't even have a relationship with this our God. So that means we are practicing empty and dead religion. We are practicing paganism. Because it is in paganism that it's in the, the concept of truth is not important. In fact, Jesus said, the truth is him and he is the truth. <laughs> he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And the truth is in the middle. The way to the truth and the truth that gives life. That's what it means. Jesus is the way to the truth because he came to testify of the truth. And the truth that you know will give you life. As a matter of fact, if you begin to read the Bible, you will discover that Jesus brought, no, no, Moses brought the law, right? Moses brought the law. But what did Jesus bring? Grace and truth. He brought the truth. Do you, we think that Jesus brought the gospel. But what he brought is truth. <laughs> so truth is so important and, and is a topic that almost nobody talks about. So if you love anybody in this world, on this planet Earth, go and invite them right now, fast, fast, to come and join right now, fast, before I begin to go deep. <laughs> so people who go to church and say that they are Christians and they don't have the concept of truth, oh, MMM. <laughs> it is MMM Christianity. <laughs> it is Loto Christianity. <laughs> Lot of Christianity. <laughs> there is no there is no certainty there at all. <laughs> it is lottery Christianity. There is no Christianity there. No, it's just it's just emotions and uh, and uh, and manifestations and you know and in paganism being played around. <laughs> so today you are going to learn so much about truth. In fact, people who go to my uh, you, Facebook, I mean, we go to my YouTube page, Sunday Adelaide Official. They don't even touch the topic on truth. Because they don't see the significance of it. <laughs> they don't even see the importance of it at all. So they don't touch it at all. <laughs> because they have been raised up in, a, in so called churches that is having more paganistic concept than the concept of truth. The churches that have been raised up, that we have been raised up in, does not value truth, has not elevated truth. The churches that we go to, they have not celebrated truth. And it has not been revealed to us that truth is the cardinal, is the cardinal corner, or, you know, is the, uh, is, is, the, is, is, the, is the very root of this, our Christian faith. As a matter of fact, let me read for you a passage in John chapter 18, verse 37. John chapter 18, verse 37. John 18, 37, he says, Pilate, when Pilate, when, when Jesus was brought to Pilate, who was supposed to decide his destiny, either to, you know, release him or to, to, to kill him. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. He said, Because of this, or for this cause, so he was declaring his purpose on the earth. Babaka babaka lo moko mabantaya. Shagagagala bako sokota bababa. Jesus had the opportunity, one time opportunity, to testify about his personality before the person who could decide his future. And that person was trying to challenge Jesus to talk about himself as a king. Say that is not, Jesus just neglected that question. Being a king is not what matters. Let me tell you about who I am. Being a king is not the big question here. Forget. Being a king, that is just the, you know, the euphoria kind of question. The sensational kind of question. Being a king, and I'm not interested in talking about a king or being a king. Yes, I'm a king, but forget. Leave that one alone. That is not what matters. That's not why I came to the earth. I didn't come to the earth to be a king. That one forget. I'm going to rule forever, the king of kings and the lord of lords. But that one we are not talking about. That's not why I came. Because I'm going to rule after this earth has gone. So I'm, that's not why I came to this earth this time. But the reason why I came this time to the earth now, let me tell you. 
This is the most important moment in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the sense that this is the time that was going to decide if he's going to go to the cross or not. And then he had the time to be able to witness on the highest level to the leadership of his nation. He knew that at this time he must talk about the most important thing. So he said, yes, I'm a king, but forget about that. Let, 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 leave that one alone. Let me tell you about the whole reason and purpose of my coming to the earth by the first place. Being the king of kings, that, let me tell you what I came for or why I was sent from my father who is in heaven. So Jesus answered, you say rightly that I'm a king, but leave that one alone. Let me tell you the reason for, for which I came. He said, for this cause, I came to the earth because of this. I was born, for this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world. He said, he, he emphasized it twice. For this one singular cause I was born. Born is one thing. Secondly, for again, they repeated, they are restated this in another way. And said, for these singular cause, I was sent into the world. So he said, for this cause, I was born on one hand. Then on the other hand, for this cause, I have come into the world. So first of all, I was born. Secondly, purpose. I was sent to the world. I came into the world. For what is that purpose? What could be that important that he had to underline it twice in, in one sentence? For this cause I was born. For this cause I came to the world. Ah, what is that cause so important? And that cause that is so important to Jesus. That cause for which Jesus was born. And that cause for which he came to the earth. Is what churches don't talk about today in my country anymore. <laughs> Jesus is saying, he's giving the definition of his reason for coming. And his reason for being born. And we don't even touch it. We don't even touch it at all. We just do. We are just gyrating. <laughs> Enjoying church. Oh God have mercy. <laughs> and Jesus is saying. For this cause I was born. And for this cause I came. Into the world. That I should. Bear witness. To one thing. To the truth. That I should bear witness to the truth. That I should bear witness to the truth. That I should bear witness to the truth. That statement that I should bear witness to the truth doesn't mean anything to an average African Christian today. Not just to the African Christian. To most Christians in the world. They don't have a concept. They don't have an idea. Okay, what does that have? They just run. No, they just go, go to the next day. Is it, they go to the next uh, verse. You know, Jesus is also saying something, something barabakababa that doesn't matter. But he is saying here clearly, for this cause I was born. This singular cause. And for this same singular cause, I was sent into the world. I came to the world. That means all our Christianity is supposed to be around the reason for his existence and for the and, and, and the reasons for his visit and the reason for his birth. All our old Christianity must be around this same singular thing because himself is, a, is all about this. And this is the same reason, the same cause that we don't pay attention to. Because if that thing that Jesus came for is not important in paganism. So what we are practicing today is paganism where that concept does not exist. The concept of truth. And the concept of truth for which Jesus came is what we don't have today in the church. Can we now say it's still the church of the Lord Jesus Christ? No. It's paganistic church that we have not left church in Africa. That's why Jesus said, for, for this cause I was born and for this cause I have come into the world that I should that I should. That I should. He doesn't have any option. No. He doesn't have any right to choose. So. Because today, if you go to churches in Nigeria today, they will be telling you, uh, in our own church, we have our own revelation. Mm. So you might be talking about truth, but that's not what God has revealed to us. We, you know, we don't need to talk about truth. We are revealed to, do, we are called as evangelists or as miracle workers or as, uh, you know, signs and wonder healing ministry. 
yeah, deliverance ministry, uh, all kind of ministry, but not truth. Know what Jesus came for. I'm just, you know, we're, so we, all of us are now, you know, identifying, caving for ourselves, our own revelation, our own aspect of the gospel. We are taking some benefit. Ah, uh, God heals. Uh, it means my own is healing ministry. Uh, this is why I take my own part. Ah, uh, God uh, delivers. Uh, that's my own part. Okay, I like that one. This, that's my own part. Uh, that's my own ministry. The deliverance ministry. <laughs> and then uh, another one we say is vision ministry, is prayer ministry, something. And Jesus, the one, the only one thing that Jesus came for, we just neglected. Have you ever seen a church that says their own ministry is truth ministry? <laughs> eh? Or they, are, they, they were created to, to establish truth or to preach truth. Have you ever seen a church like that? Eh? Hmm? <laughs> we have not gotten there yet. Because all what we want is the manifestation. All what we want is just the, 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 the sensationalism. So Jesus said, for this cause I came to the world, and for this cause I was born, for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. That I should bear witness to the truth. That I should bear witness to the truth. That I, Jesus himself, doesn't have any option. Jesus himself cannot pick and select. Jesus himself cannot pick and choose. Jesus himself doesn't have a way out of truth. That's why the whole, you know, if you see Jesus, he's always talking about truth, 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 truth. But we don't even know what he's talking about. Two things he's talking about all the time. Kingdom, truth. Kingdom, truth. Kingdom, truth. He's talking about truth. He's talking about the kingdom. He's talking about truth. He's talking about kingdom. He's talking about truth. He's talking about kingdom. Then he's talking about his father. Those are the three things Jesus is talking about. But we don't even get it. We don't get it. We don't get it. We don't even know what he talks about when he's talking about truth. And so most churches just totally neglected. <laughs> Some people will say their own ministry is to get people pregnant, or to, have, to, to, to remove barrenness. That's their own ministry. When Jesus is talking about truth, some people will say my own ministry is for single ladies to be married. Some people will say their own ministry is to make people have, have, have money. You know, all kind of thing breakthrough is their ministry. When Jesus is saying his own ministry is truth, we just divorce from Jesus altogether. So this topic is very important today because it is paganism that doesn't have the concept of truth. They don't know what to do with truth. They don't know how to undo it. They don't even know how it looks like. They don't even know how it, how it works. That is why today in the African church, lie and deception is enthroned in the place of truth. Deception. Most ministry is just based on deception and manipulation because there is no concept of truth and there is no underlining the truth. There is no elevation of truth. There is no celebration of truth. There is even no concept of truth. There is no philosophy of truth. We don't even have the philosophy of truth. That's why when people go to my page, to my YouTube page, Sunday the Ledger Official, they don't even go, when they see the power and force of truth, they don't even know what it means. They don't even know what to expect. They don't know that that's one of the most important things in that, in that YouTube page. So Jesus said, this is the reason, the singular reason why I was born. Because to testify to the truth. Even Jesus, he can only testify to the truth. Even though he himself is the truth. And God is truth. But he can only be at the mercy of truth. And can only be a servant of truth. So truth is so absolutely universal. Truth is so absolute and objective. That even Jesus cannot manipulate it. And the only thing Jesus can do about the truth is to just testify about it. He cannot subject the truth to himself. He, even Jesus cannot subject the truth to himself and under himself. Because the Bible says there is nothing we can do against the truth but for the truth. There is nothing we can do against the truth but for the truth. There is nothing we can do against the truth but for the truth. And that's why God is raising me and to give me a voice to talk. And that's why nobody's going to silence this voice. And that's why I'm going, I'm talking, I'm releasing this thing. So, because there is nothing anybody can do against the truth, that's why I'm so bold. Because there is nothing anybody can do against the truth, that's why all the people who are not happy in Africa about these my messages, they, will, they cannot do anything about it. They, they, because there is no amount of time, there is no amount of kilometers that lies travel. That it will not be overtaken by the truth. 
the truth will catch up. That's why all the lies and the deception happening in the African church, if the truth is going to catch up and it has started, the revelation don't, the revolution don't start. And this revolution is being broadcasted live. Mm, the revolution will be broadcasted. <laughs> because the truth cannot be hidden. And the truth cannot be killed. In fact, if you kill the truth like this, uh, it will always keep on resurrecting itself. And if you say, no, me, I'm smart. I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to cut it in pieces, pieces like that, that there will, no, there will be no wholeness of truth. You know what's going to do? Every part, every particle, every piece of that truth <laughs> is going to be shouting. Now, maybe the truth, I did hear. <laughs> every, if you don't have one truth shouting one, from one place, you'll be shouting from 1,000 pieces where you have got it. So the truth is going to overtake the church in Africa. The truth is going to overtake the paganism in Africa. The truth is going to shine bright. And the darkness in our churches are going to be exposed. That's why everybody is begging me. Every day I'm receiving thousands of the, the communications. You know, hundreds of mails, hundreds of messages begging me to stop and not to show video, not to talk, not to mention name, not to please, just, please, just preach your word. Don't talk, don't talk, don't talk. They want to silence the truth. Because the truth, we are afraid of the truth. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verses 19 to 21, that it is darkness that runs away from truth, from light. Because the truth is the light. It is darkness, darkness that runs away. It is because their work is dead. It's, it's, their work is darkness. They are, they are living in darkness. In fact, let me, let, me, let, me, let me read it for you. John. Because everybody knows John chapter 3 verse, verse 16. Everybody knows John chapter 3 verse 16. But the next <laughs> verses that follow, they don't know again. John, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Everybody knows that one. But what follows? Nobody has an idea. <laughs> In verse 16, he says, for God so loved the world, right? Everybody knows that one. John 3, 16, he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Then, he goes to verse 19. And he says, and this is the condemnation, that the light, which is the truth, the light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light. That's why nobody is talking about truth. That's why there is no concept of truth being promoted, or the concept of light. Because their deeds are evil. People whose deeds are evil, they don't like to talk about the truth and light. They are hiding from the truth. They are saying, keep it cool. No, silent, silent. Don't, don't, don't wash the, tide, you know, the dirty linen outside. Don't wash the dirty linen. Put it inside. Let's keep, you know, call people one-on-one. -on -one. Don't, put, don't put it out there. Because their deeds are evil. They don't want you to go to the light. For everyone practicing evil hates the light. You see why the hatred towards me is going to come from? People are going to hate me like crazy. And does not, they, you know, they hate the light and does not come to the light, lest their deeds are exposed. But he who does the truth, you see, truth is light, is used interchangeably. He who does the truth comes to the light, you see. <coughs> truth and light are the same. But that his deeds may be made clear and seen clearly that they have been done in God. You see, tomorrow I'm going to release a video tomorrow. And I call the video. Mm, to my dear friends, to, to my friends, uh, don't cry for me or something like that. I was going to wash out. I want all of you to wash out for the video. I'm going to be releasing a video this, this week, from, starting from tomorrow. That's going to call, to, I think to my dear friends or something. It's called. To my friends, to my friends, please don't cry for me. It's going to be called to my friend. Wash out. But somebody could write it. Wash out for the video. To my friends, please don't cry for me. You need to see that video. How many minutes is it? I think it's just nine minutes or ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. About ten about ten minutes video. Just ten minutes video, you know, that I've I've released. And I want you people to go and get that video and share it all over the internet. It's going to come out tomorrow morning, I think. <sighs> so get it and you know share it and distribute it. You you are going to be scared by that video if you are not careful. Some of you are going to cry by that video. And some of you are going to be you are going to be praying for after that video. Well, you will understand the reason. You will remember this message when I, when I, when I, uh, maybe we'll even put it tonight. I think we'll put it tonight. We'll put, we'll upload it tonight. We'll upload the video tonight 
uh, after this broadcast, you will see the video. It says uh, to my dear friends, eh? to my friends, to my friends, please don't cry for me. Look for that video. And please help us share it everywhere. Just share the video everywhere. So, the, again, the, teaching, the topic today is in paganism, truth is, there is no concept of truth. truth. Truth is subjective. What does it mean subjective? Subjective means truth is dependent on the person who is powerful. Subjective means truth is dependent on the person who is talking right now. Subjective means truth is dependent on the person who has the microphone. Subjective means that the person who has the voice, who has the microphone, is, is, is talking his truth. Everybody can just change. Subjective means that it depends on individual. It depends on somebody. So anybody that is powerful at this time tells his own truth. Anybody that is in charge brings his own truth. Truth, just anything that anybody could come up with, that is truth in paganism. So in paganism, every babalawo has his own concept and his own truth. In paganism, all witch doctors, every one of them has his own technique. Because there is no universal truth. But Jesus said he came to testify only of truth, one truth. Even he cannot make truth, cannot manufacture his own truth. <laughs> Even he, Jesus, cannot come up with his own subjective truth. Truth cannot be subjective. But if you go to churches in Nigeria today, every church has its own, has its own revelation. In fact, there is no general concept of, you know, you know, truth, universal truth in Nigerian churches today. Every man of God is having his own idea, his own truth. In fact, every church member is telling you, you know, this is our own revelation. This is our own belief system. This is what we believe. This is what we practice. And they, if you tell them about the truth, they'll say, hey, that's what you believe. That is your own truth in your own church. But in our own church, this is the way we believe it. <laughs> because there is no truth. That is paganism. In Christianity, truth is exalted above everything else. And truth is universal. And truth is objective, not subjective. That's why even Jesus had to testify to one singular truth. He said he was born to testify about that truth. And he came to the world to testify about that same truth. So then what does he say finally? He says, everyone... Who is of truth. Jesus is saying this. Everyone who is of the truth. Hears my voice. Truth. That's the criteria. Not born again no. Not repeat prayer. Truth. Is the criteria. And the basis and foundation of Christianity. But in Africa almost nobody knows this. That truth is the foundation of Christianity. That it is truth that Christianity is built on. That the foundation stones of Christianity of the church is the truth. The Bible says in Timothy that the church is the foundation and the pillar of truth. Foundation and pillar of truth. The pillar and foundation of truth. Of truth. The whole church is supposed to establish truth and Uphold truth like a pillar. You know the way pillar upholds house. That's what the church is created for. To uphold not your own denomination, not your doctrine, or not your own. Just like the church, just like Jesus came to testify about the truth, so also church was created to testify and uphold the truth. Both Jesus and the church were sent to the world, were created, were born on the earth. For one purpose. That same one purpose is still truth. And it is this truth that nobody knows about and talk about in, my, in churches in Africa. Everybody just doing their own. That's why so much chaos is in churches in Nigeria, in Africa. So much chaos. Everybody is doing their own God. Because they don't love the truth. They have not exalted the truth above themselves. They have not subjected themselves to the truth. They have not submitted themselves to the truth. And they have not let the truth have dominion over them. Everybody is having, the only thing that's having dominion over all those geos and bishops, the only thing that's having dominion over them is, uh, is their ego, ambition, their own vision. It is their love for themselves. They don't even know that their allegiance must be to the truth. 
they don't have an idea. And it's a pity. Now, let me give you another subtitle here. Oh, somebody said money. Yeah, I think so. Money, the allegiance is not only true, it's to money and mammon. Right, you are right. That's why mammon has, is so easily taking over the church in Africa, the love of money. Well, let me continue my message. So, what truth, I mean, what is, what, what is truth then in paganism? What is truth? What is the concept of truth in paganism? Or, what is it that truth is not in Christianity? I have a whole, like I said, I have like 50 hours or 100 hours of teaching on truth on, on my YouTube page. But what is truth in paganism? What is the concept of truth in paganism? In paganism, truth is anything that works. <laughs> you get it? So if you go to a church... For example, but that is what Nigerian churches and African churches are now practicing. Because they don't have a concept of truth. Anything that works. So if you come now and bring coconut and say, you know, you know, can you show me the coconut in some of the film about India? You have it. If you come now with coconut and say this coconut, break it and go and wash, I mean wash with it or something, it will give you healing. In Nigeria, they are practicing it now, but they don't know that that is coming from Hinduism. That is coming from paganism of India. That coconut, killing through coconut is a practice in India. Not just through coconut. It could be through coconut. It could be through uh, salt. You know, salt. It could be through you know, cloth. It could be through any inanimate object. When people are using inanimate object to bring healing and deliverance to themselves and they need to do something, it is witchcraft. It is, it, it is voodoo. And people, churches in Nigeria now are practicing it. Magic, ESP. Because in paganism, and if it works, they will just tell you, it works now. Ah, they will even say, come. I know somebody. She was, healed, she was sick of cancer or any sickness. And I gave her the coconut. I broke it on her head. And I said, wash it or with, with more, more lemon. I gave her lemon. I said, wash with it. Or I gave her anointing oil. I say, wash with it. Come and rub yourself body with it. Or I gave her, mm, you know, only water. Go and drink it every day. Put it in your food and eat it. I, I get anything. And they will tell you that I will not agree to you. You say it's not true. I will not agree with why. Because I will see, see her. This lady, she was dying. And now, because I washed that with the coconut oil or with the, <laughs> with whatever, she's healed. So because it has worked, that thing has worked. So I believe it. It is the truth. So it means that if it is Babalawo that gives them, or which, which doctor that gives them some prescription and it works, our, the people in paganism, the only argument, the strongest argument is that it works. The argument is not that it is truth, but in Christianity, the argument why anything matters and the basis for faith and action and belief in Christianity is not that the thing works is that it is in corresponding with the truth. The basis of faith, the basis of action, the basis of, you know, belief system in Christianity is that it is corresponding with the truth. It's not that it works or it doesn't work. Because armed robbers, it works also for them when they, that's why they are going to steal. You know, people who are, who, who are 419, it works for them. Oh, 419, ah, it works oh. <laughs> so because it works now it becomes the truth that is what our churches are doing anything that works if a papa has come to bring some witchcraft and do some magical thing ah, they say it works once it works for example I was talking about prophet offering that it is, it is, it is not a doctrine we should do it it's not practice or false fruit people came to me and said that it worked for me so I don't care it worked. so even if it is deception and it works for you because that is a culture of paganist, is paganism that doesn't have the concept of truth. In the West, for example, if they tell you that, if, they, if you say this thing is you in our country, if, you, if the 419 or MMM, as long as it works for you, it's okay. But in the, in the West, they will put you in prison for it. Even though it works for you, you will go to jail. You will be punished for it. Because what is not in accordance to the truth is deception. You don't practice something. You don't accept something because it works. That is paganistic philosophy. 
If, if that is the reason why our, our, our politicians, that's why they are stealing. The reason why our politicians are stealing is because it works for them. And they are not cashing them. It works. The reason why everything is bad is because people say it's worked for me. Kidnapping is also working. There is one man that, that was kidnapped, they were doing kidnapping, Evans or what? Evans. The Evans guy, why was he doing kidnapping? It's because it works for him. And why are people getting him? He has his own team. Because it works. So do we, it is not because things work that we practice them. It is because it is truth. For example, I know people in Nigerian churches, a lot of men of God, Suleiman uh, and all those kind of guys, you know, what's the Okafo and, you know, all those kind of guys. They are do, using, uh, what do you call them? You know, arranged miracles. You know, you know, they are using arranged miracles and all those, you know, arranged miracles. Getting information from people and begin to call telephone numbers. And people will say, ah, it worked for me, oh. or I've seen it work. Some people give testimony. Because that is paganism. It is in paganism that the only authority or the final authority is that it works. But in Christianity, God knows that that's why Jesus said, don't go to after, which, I mean, after signs and wonders. Don't go looking for signs and wonders. Because signs and wonders work in every, every place. But, you know, look for truth. Even me, Jesus, I came to testify about truth. It is only truth that is supposed to be absolute for you. Not what works. Okay, let's talk about the coconut one. We have a video here from India that shows that coconut also works in India. It brings healing and miracle. And Nigerian pastors have started using coconut. But it's not just coconut. It could be ribena. It could be yeah, oil. It could be, you know, water. It could be anything. It could be handkerchief. Any inanimate object that is... <laughs> you see, that is the kind of thing we should be demonstrating in Nigeria. To open people's eyes that all these, they are miracle workers... All these, they are pastors. All these, they are men of God that they are falling after. Is because of ignorance. They are taking advantage of our ignorance because we are basing our our. Faith. That is what paganism is all about: basing people's faith not on truth, not on the word of God, not on absolute truth of God's I you know personality, but on miracles. When any any religious organization or church or man of God base their arguments on miracles when they base their belief on signs and wonders this is what happens deception of the highest order and this is what is happening in my country so number one that's the first something i mentioned to you what is truth in paganism truth is what works you see that the coconut work there you see things work here it, and because it works that is why people began to worship it in fact when the man came and said it's a lie they almost beat the man they wanted to kill the man the man who said it is a fake, they wanted to kill him. That is what they want to do with me now. When I'm now re re revealing the truth about what we practice in Nigeria, and I'm telling them that it is paganism, they are ready to kill me. Go and see all kind of things. Even people who used to follow me before, people who used to be on my platform here, they have started a whole group to just attack me because I'm telling the truth about paganism. Before I started paganism, nobody was attacking me like that. But now, they are writing articles about me, doing video against me, just because I am revealing the truth about people. They cannot believe it. People cannot stand the truth. Because they have been so deceived by, by lies. Because they have based their, 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 their faith not on truth of the word of God, but on signs and wonders, on people's authority, on the authority of a man. So that is number one. In paganism, truth is anything that works. Number two. In paganism, truth is is whatever feel, makes people feel good. I come to the church, ah, it means God is there. But they don't know that the God that is there is because of the music. That is why every church in Nigeria now pays so much attention to music. That is why every church in Nigeria now is about praise and worship. They look for praise and worship leaders, eh? They look for instrumentalists, eh? But we could make God appear without music now. Let God appear without instrument. Let God, in fact, some of them with lightning and dressing and all those things are makeups. Why cannot God walk without makeup, without so sensation? Because they are using all different things to, to influence people's feelings so that people will feel good, so that people will feel that God is there. And that is paganism. 
If you need to manipulate people's feeling and manipulate and, and you no know, make people feel goose goosebumps and so that they will they will be, be deceived, that is what is happening in Nigerian church. That's why they are exalting you know testimonies that, that high. That is why they are ex ex exalting miracles, signs and wonders that high, so that people will think, oh God is here. Oh, because in paganism, it is not the truth that matters. In paganism, it is anything that feels good that makes them feel good. I was having a headache, I'm better, so that it means that's the truth, I believe. I was feeling bad when I came here, and now I'm feeling good. Anything that makes you feel good is the truth in paganism. Remember, the first thing is anything that works. works. Anything that works in paganism is the truth. Number two, anything that makes you feel good. Number three. In paganism, the truth is anything people can feel. If you could make them to feel something, to, to, because perception, paganism uses perception of the senses. You have to show them something. I spoke about that too yesterday. You have to make them see something, some wonders, some miracle. There is somebody here that, uh, you, know, you know, your address is, you know, you live in the village of Ababakada, and your, and your, number, no, your address is this, and your number is this, and then they say, oh, I'm the one who... Oh. It doesn't matter if that person has been planted there or not. It doesn't matter if that person has been paid or not. Oh, I am the one who... Oh. Everybody has seen perception. They have perceived in their, with their ears and their eyes. Then they will be going everywhere fighting for the man of God. And say, I saw it in my eyes, a man of God. So when I now come and I tell them that people like uh, Ulutayo is a fake, is a, is, is, is a pro uh, pro proponent of demonic doctrine, people will say, ah... Why will you say that he's a man of God? I was there. I saw some miracles. When I come here and begin to tell them that you no, know, you no, know, people like Suleiman are fake that are setting up miracles and fake miracles and you know, you know, you know, just picking pockets from people through deception. They will say, Ah, oh no, ah, how can you say that? He's a man of God because I saw something. Because to them, it is anything that affects their senses. That is why paganism is all about, you know, you know, people's, you know, you know, trying to influence you through your senses, through what you have seen, through some stories, through some, you know, some, some dramat dramatism. If you now listen in in uh, in 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 churches now, when the testimonies are going, there will be somebody holding the microphone saying, "Yes, man of God," or "Yeah, yes, uh, it is so, man of God," or something like that. Present trying to make people to clap or to shout or senses because it, if they want to bring out sensation from people's senses you know so so paganism if the truth is based on what people perceive they must feel something or hear something or feels you know you know feel good you know make people not just feel good this is different a little bit from making them feel good this is to affect their senses either their hearing or their eyes or their tongue or their touch that is that is uh, empiricism. That's what it's called. And and uh, you know when the truth when if truth is anything that makes them feel you know, good, that is called mysticism. So it is mysticism that people are practicing in Nigeria today. And it, it, whenever you we, we, you see people who receive anything that makes them feel good, that's the number one something I gave. If any in paganism, remember number one is anything that feels good is the truth. And that is in mysticism the same thing. Just like in India, we just saw now. Anything that makes you feel good is the truth. That is how mysticism is established. Number two, I told you that uh, truth in paganism is anything. Uh, what did I call it? Huh? It makes you to feel good, right? That's number two. Yes. Number two is anything that makes you to feel good. And that is, uh, that is, that is, uh, you know, empiricism, empiricism. That is empiricism. Sorry, I made a mistake. Number three is anything in, in paganism, truth is anything that an authority figure declares to be the truth, is the truth. That is number three. Sorry for that. Number three is anything that the authority figure says is the truth 
whatever he believes is the truth and he tells you is the truth is is what becomes the truth but that is it is relative relative truth is relative to the person who is proponent, propon, proposing it truth is relative to the person who is saying it truth is relative to his opinion his opinion could change it they will say it depends it depends on this it depends on that so in in paganism truth is always dependent from one abalist to the other from the, the same abalist could say today one thing and tomorrow he say another thing no, no, truth is relative in paganism. Number four, in paganism, truth is what majority believes. <laughs> wow, but see how many people, see the crowd. Are you seeing the crowd that goes there? That is why the churches in Africa are running after crowd. <laughs> they, will, they would like to impress you and tell you that because they have large following, that means they are the truth. So the argument of the churches today is not the truth of the word of God. Though. The Bible says, sanctify them with thy truth because thy word is the truth. The word is the truth. That is in Christianity. Truth is only one thing. The word of God and the, the, the standard of God. Even Jesus came to testify about the truth. But in paganism, <laughs> I am sorry. It is where the crowd is. That is called majoritarianism majoritarianism that means where the crowd is where the crowd is strongest it is the you know all or the 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 the, 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 the survivor of the fittest whoever has the most crowd or the most power who are demonstrated the most control over crowd where the who has the majority of people who has the biggest crowd is the one who is right so it doesn't matter whatever truth you come for you know, how many people do you have how many people follow you? Ah, how many people do you have in your church? So for, forget you. If, like some people are now telling me, ah, how many people have you saved? How many churches have you started? <laughs> how many members do you have in your church? So Nigeria now, the truth is now based on how many members you have in your church. <laughs> so in Nigeria now, it doesn't matter what you are saying or whatever crazy doctrine you are coming with. As long as you, you are having big... I mean, can you... Now, saying... That people, uh, that people need to come and sanctify or people need to either come and bless or what they call it? Blessing of firstborn. Is it blessing of firstborn children? Can you, how can Nigeria Christians, how can Christians in my country go to that crazy extent that you need to come and sanctify and bless your firstborn? So it means that if I'm born as a firstborn in the physical, that is the birth of Adam. That is the fifth birth of my flesh. So it means that the birth, the flesh, the birth in the flesh is stronger than the birth in the spirit. It has what they are trying to say. It means that my born again experience, being born in the spirit now, is inferior to my being born in the, because I'm born first born in the flesh. So that means I, that is what, what would decide my future. And so I need to go and be blessed and be purified and be delivered and be something like that. So as if the, you know, okay, they call it the redeeming of the firstborn. As if the redemption in Christ is not superior to being firstborn or not firstborn. What, who has bewitched us to that extent? What kind of crazy doctrines are we coming up with? And you know what makes people to, to, to believe it? It's because it's been done by the big pastors. They will say, oh, Papa Gio has sanctioned it. Papa Gio even does it. Oh, Pastor... Somebody that I respect so much is Bishop Waleoke. And I saw a video. Is there a video like that? Show me the video. I saw a video where this man that I respect so much, I see him, for me, he's my most respected man of God in Nigeria, Pastor Waleoke. And I see that he himself is now doing redeeming of firstborn. I said, my God, things have gone really bad in that country. And of course, it has to end with some money, with some offering. And because the crowd is doing it, and because all the people, the big people are doing it, it means it has to be right. Because that is paganism. Let me tell you again. Truth in paganism is what works. And they will come to you and be telling you that it works now. <laughs> Since it works, what do you want to say? It works for me. I don't know what you feel. What you want? It works for me. And what works, if you base your truth on what works, is called, is called pragmatism. Uh, what do I call it? Mysticism. You know, sorry. Oh, I messed up the whole thing. Sorry. Pragmatism, is, when you base your faith on what works, is pragmatism. 
I'm sorry. When you base your faith on what works, is pragmatism. But when you base then, and they will say it works. So since it works, it means, what will you tell me? You cannot tell me anything. And then another thing in, in paganism is, paganism is based on what works. That's pragmatism. It's not Christianity. True Christianity is based on truth. Number two, in paganism, truth is anything that feels good. That is mysticism. That is mysticism. When people base their, their what? Their truth on, on, on what is right or correct on what feels good, that is mysticism. Then, uh, number three, in paganism, their truth is based on whatever the big man declares, whatever, that is called relativism. Relativism. And number four, is that number four now? Number four is paganism based their truth, what is right, on their five senses. I mentioned that, but I missed it all yeah. with what feels good. Empiri but Empiri that is called em imperialism. Empiricism. Empiricism. That is empiricism. That is empiric empirical feelings. That's empirical senses. Empiricism. So that is empiricism. Empiricism is, you know, perception of the senses. When faith is based on, you know, uh, empirical, em empirical senses. So that is what paganism is. And then finally, paganism, they will tell you that, you know, it, you know, it is true because a majority, a, a large crowd believes it. And that is majoritarianism. So those things are not truth. Those are just paganistic, you know, mysticism and philosophies, cool beliefs that they believe to be truth. But in Christ, in, in, in Christianity, the Bible says, purify them with your word, sanctify them with your word. Your word is the truth. Can we see the, this film here? It does it start how many? Is it not too long? Where does it start? Okay. Okay. Please, let's see. I command an end to sickness. There's a lamp. I command an end to stagnation. There's a lamp. I command an end to wandering. There is a lamp. There is a lamp for you. I revoke every plague of the firstborn. I revoke every plague of the firstborn. I revoke every plague by the blood of the Lamb. I command a restoration of the rights of the priesthood, the excellency of dignity, I restore the excellency of power, I restore, I restore dominion, I restore wealth, I restore breakthrough, I restore favor, I restore honor, I restore dignity, I restore wealth, I restore prosperity. I restore promotion. I restore the glory of the firstborn by the blood of the Lamb. I restore everything that was lost by the blood of the Lamb. There is a Lamb for my household. There is a Lamb. And by the blood of Jesus... I'm I sorry, I'm sorry. This is, this is crude, crude paganism. Crude paganism. I don't worship him. This is crude deception in the church. How can you be telling people that the, birth, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is not enough? That you need to go to some pastors, some men of God to redeem your firstborn? Who has bewitched us? Who is telling? Who, I mean, who has bewitched us? Who has bewitched the church in Africa? Is this not what I'm saying? That there is no truth. It is anywhere where truth is not emphasized. Anywhere where truth is not elevated. Anywhere where truth is not celebrated. That is paganism. It is because paganism is the place where they don't have the concept and the absolutism of the truth. In Christianity, the only thing that decides, the only standard, the only measurement for truth and for action and for belief, for belief, and it's the absolutism of the truth. The truth is elevated above everything else. But what do we see today? Is this not paganism? Because in paganism, truth is anything that works. As long as it works, it is the truth. But that is not Christianity. That is pragmatism. 
In paganism, truth is anything that feels good. But anything that feels good is not Christianity because Christianity doesn't always feel good. To obey God, Jesus Christ was supposed to go to the cross, to the Calvary, and he was sweating like blood. And he was saying the, body, the spirit is willing, but the, body, I mean, the flesh is weak. And he was telling his disciples to pray for him, even. He, didn't want, he was not feeling good. But in our churches today, everything is around feeling good. If it's feeling good, it means God is there. Everything that makes you feel good means God is there. Which is mysticism. Mystic. Mysticism is what we are practicing in Nigeria, in Africa today, and we call it Christianity. It is not Christianity. Christianity is based in, on faith in the word of God. And faith in the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ only. His death and resurrection is enough. And mysticism, I mean, paganism is also, you know, based on what the men of God, the big men of God declare. So once the big men of God have said, this must be done, then everybody asks, who are you to question it? So, so I'm questioning all these practices now, and people are telling me, who are you to correct Geo? Who are you to correct Bishop? Who are you to correct this and this? Because they are pagan worshippers. They are, they are idol worshippers. They don't base their judgment on truth. In Christianity, the only basis of judgment is truth. It doesn't matter who it concerns. It doesn't matter who is saying it. It doesn't matter whose who's, who's, uh, ox is God. It, it, it doesn't matter whose feather is ruffled. The truth must be absolute. And the truth must stand supreme in every situation. What is not truth is not true. And our allegiance must be only to the truth. And that's why Sir Isaac Newton said, you know, you know, uh, Plato is my friend, uh, uh, so Socrates is my friend, but the truth is my greatest friend. The truth should be our only and, you know, absolute allegiance. So in Christianity, that's why all our churches now is built around senses, around making people sensationalism, to feel something. The five senses. That is what we are practicing and we are calling Christianity today. And that is called empir empirical senses, em empiricism. Empiricism. Empiricism is what we are practicing. We make people, we, drop, we bring drums, we bring you know, singers, we bring you know, uh, jokers, what do you call them? Comic people, Comedian. comedians. We bring comedians, we bring miracle workers, we fix, uh, fix miracles, arrange miracles. We do, uh, we do arrange miracles, we, we do arrange miracles, we do everything just for, you know, for people to feel empi empirical senses, with their empirical senses. But in the Bible says that we don't walk in by sight, we walk by faith. Christianity is supposed only to be by faith. And the Bible says you know the truth, and the truth has set you free. You don't need all the empirical no, influences like that is being practiced today. Why is it that people are coming with sensationalism? Oh, I know your telephone number, I know your pounds, I know your address, I know your village, I know the sham that is buried. It is all to bring about empirical, empirical senses. And to make you to have to 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 to, to, to influence and bring influence into your into your you know, empirical senses, so that you will be able to sense the sensationalism and be carried away by emotions, and then be believe that these people are telling the truth. That is paganism. That is what which doctors have done in Africa in, for ages. We have brought the witch doctors and the uh, no, paganism back in the pulpit. And now, the most important argument is that, oh, the big church has done it. If the big churches are doing it, everybody is copying them. The big churches must be right. But that is called majoritarianism. That is majoritarianism. That is not Christianity. That is not true. That is why in Christianity, the only basis for decision making and the only basis for judgment is truth. John 17, 17. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. John 18, 37, Jesus said, you know, uh, for this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should be a testimony, I should be a witness to the truth. And Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. It's the only basis for our, our faith. Now, let me do something here today. Let me tell you what is done in our churches, what is practiced in our churches. To prove to you that 
we don't have the concept of truth in the Nigerian churches. What we will practice is paganism. And I want to prove that to you. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Whenever we are not practicing the truth, so what is, how does the truth look like in our churches today? Our truth, the truth in, in African churches is always subjective instead of objective. The truth has to be objective, independent of personalities. But in African churches today, their truth is what comes from the GO's office, what comes from the bishop's office, what comes from the leader's office. That is subjective truth. That is not Christianity. Subjective truth is only in paganism. It's not in Christianity. Because subjective truth is always biased truth. Number two argument that we are not we don't know we don't have the concept of truth in Nigerian Christianity today in African Christianity. In our churches today, the truth is whatsoever works. That's why they emphasize miracles so much, and that's why they are always parading miracles. Everybody wants to do fake miracles because they want to prove to you that they are, they, that is their own their, you know their own authenticity. All the main minister of God now, they are authentic authenticifying themselves by what works, that something works, miracles happen. Instead of them to authenticify themselves by their doctrines, by the truth, by their faithfulness and devotion to the truth. Number three, the concept of truth in Nigerian Christianity today, uh, that which we say prove that we don't have truth, we, don't, we, we are not practicing Christianity, because truth to people in Nigerian churches today is whatever God told me, or the rema, the latest rema, or the, the latest revelation of the man of God is the truth. They will say, they will tell you about the, the dreams that they have. They will tell you about uh, an angel that appeared to them. They will tell you about the three days that they were speaking with Jesus. They will tell you about the revelation that Jesus brought to them. They will tell you all kind of revelations. Revelation has more authority now in Nigerian churches than the word of God than the truth of the word of God. And that is paganism. Next point. In some churches in Africa, or most churches in Africa, the truth, the absolute, the supreme truth is the mandate of the ministry or the calling of the ministry. They will tell you that the ministry, this is their mandate. They have their own mandate. So in that ministry, in every ministry now, it is not the word of God that is the mandate. It is not the truth of God that is the mandate. Every church has their own mandate or their own doctrine, or their own calling, their own. That is the highest authority of that church. That is not Christianity. That is paganism. In Nigerian churches today, the truth to them is the, are the practices and the culture, the practices, whatever the practice in their church. Either it is feet washing or it is handkerchief or it is oil, or it is stone, it is uh, coconut, or it is uh, anything that they practice, that is the truth to them. It is not the word of God that is the truth. He said thy word is the truth, but not in paganism. They just use the word of God to, as a powder to just, you know, you know, just, you know, blindfold people. The Bible, in the, they, they, they all of them preach Bible, but it's just for the facade. Bible is just to so give decoration that we are Christian. We are Christian something. But that is not the basis of their truth. They don't, they don't act by the Bible. They don't act by the truth. They don't even know. They, don't even, they have not even defined the truth of the word of God. In paganism and in African churches today, the truth is the word, is the, are the words of the, of, the, of the supreme man. Then, to the man, to the man of God in Nigeria... To most of them, the truth is anything that makes their church grow. Anything that is bringing growth to the church is the truth. It's not, there is no absolutism of the word of God. Anything that will make them to have more money, more growth, is the truth. Next point. In most churches, anything that keeps the miracle coming is the truth. As in, as you know, as against what you have just had now, let me tell you what truth is. Let me tell you what truth is. 
Psalm 111, verse 7 and 8. Psalm 111, the standard, I want to give you the standards of truth, the characteristics of truth. I want to tell you, so I've told you the, uh, the, 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 the absence of truth in, the, in, in African churches, that is paganism. There is no concept of truth. But let me now give you the concept of truth, the characteristics of truth. Psalms 111, verse 7 and 8 says, The works of his hands are truth. And justice, justice and truth, or verity and truth, I mean, and justice. All his precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever. Why? Because they are done in truth and uprightness. All his works stand forever and ever for one reason, because they are done in truth. Everything that is not done in truth will collapse. That's why I know and I can say of a fact that in the next 50 to 100 years time, all those cathedrals we are building is going to be empty. I prophesy to you. I don't even need to prophesy. Come see Europe. Anything that is not built on truth will be empty. Maybe we don't even need 50 years because as soon as those geos begin to die, everything will begin to crumble. They will begin to fight each other. Because it's not it things that is be whenever the truth is compromised, the truth will come back to fight you and to scatter you. Because there is nothing anybody can do against the truth but only for the truth. When you stand for the truth, the truth will stand for you and defend you. And that's why I'm so bold. That's why I'm so confident. That's why I'm so... Because I'm standing on the side of the truth. The truth will speak for me even when I'm dead. Even if you kill me a thousand times, the truth that I preach will keep on speaking to generations to come. Baka ba ba ra ba ba. And you that have compromised the truth and that have brought paganism to the church, I prophesy to you today that that truth will arise and will come and vindicate me and that truth will come and fight you and scatter all the billions that you have gathered. All your money will become nothing and all your churches and all those congregations and cathedrals will be empty. And it's not because I say it. It's because that's the way the truth works. There is no works. There is nothing anybody can do against the truth. You cannot go against the truth and prosper for long. You cannot go against the truth and live forever. The only thing that makes things to be established forever is because they are established on the truth. Psalms 11, Psalms 111, 7 to 8 says, All his concepts are sure because they are truth. All his works and the work are truth. And they stand forever and never. The only thing that will stand forever and never is because it is done and based in truth and uprightness. It is only the thing that I establish in truth that will stand forever. And so I dare to declare that the Christianity, the paganistic Christianity that we are seeing today is going to be empty. Everything will be scattered because there is nothing anybody can do against the truth. And anything that is not built on the truth cannot stand forever. It is only truth that makes things to stand forever. To be established forever. His words are established forever because they are the truth. And they have been tried seven times in fire. But the gospel that is preached in my country and in my continent today cannot stand the te test of time and the test of truth. What then is the test, are the test of truth? Let me give you right now the characteristics of truth. Number one, truth will always be absolute. What does that mean? If the thing is true, it's going to be true not just in Nigeria. If the thing is true that you are practicing, it will be true not just in your own denomination and in your own church. If it is the truth, it will be truth in every continent. In every, that is why I started this by testifying that I am not a crazy man. They are trying to say I'm backsliding, I'm a sinner, I'm a crazy man, and that that's why I'm saying rubbish. But the truth that I preach, the gospel that I preach, have been able to penetrate every culture. I'm not talking about what Nigerian churches are doing, practicing. I mean, their own truth can only attract Nigerians in England. Their own truth can only attract Nigerians in every country. But they are all black people like them. But my, the gospel that I've preached, I've proved it, that it will, it, will, it will penetrate any nation. It will attract every group of people. The truth that I preach is the truth that is absolute. That truth will be absolute to every category of people, rich or poor. Truth 
If the word of God is truth, if the practices of your church, if the practices of your messages, of the doctrine is true, it will be absolute in every situation. That is number one kind of statistic of truth. Two, truth must be absolute. One plus one must be two. It cannot be three today and four tomorrow. If you have not listened to my series on truth, please, I beg you. There is nothing more important than that. Please go and look for my teachings on truth. And they are on my YouTube page. They are on my YouTube page. And the YouTube page is Sunday Adelaide Official. Sunday Adelaide Official. Go look for my YouTube page. Sunday Adelaide Official. And you will see a series in the home page. One of the series is called The Power and Force of Truth. So that is number one characteristic of truth. Number two characteristic of truth is truth is universal. Anything they are practicing in the churches in Nigeria, anything your church is practicing, if it is true, it will be true to, for all people. It will be true in all places. It will be true at all times. It will be true at all times. In all cultures, in different historical era, 100 years ago, and now, it will be true in every nationality. It will be true, in, and it will not be dependent on changing world. And it will, doesn't change. What, but the kind of doctrines that have been practiced in Nigeria today, they don't even stand the test of time beyond the borders of, of Nigeria and beyond the borders of Africa. Because it, is, it only appeals to paganistic societies and paganistic cultures. And that's why our gospel only works in the cultures where there is paganism. It is our culture, our doctrines are not universal because they are not based on the truth of the word of God. That is why we can talk, we are talking about demons, 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 demons. That's why we are talking about enemies, enemies, enemies. And when you tell them that, why is it that enemy, enemy is not affecting Europeans? And demon, demon is not affecting Europeans. They say, ah, our case is different. This is Africa. As if it is the Afri as if Christianity originated from Africa. As if the Christ it is not the Europeans who brought Christianity to Africa. And as if the all the demons of Africa and the you know witchcraft of Africa didn't bow down before the gospel that the white men brought. That's why we are all Christians today, because the white men brought the gospel to us. And the gospel worked without all our emphasis on demons and, 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 and enemies. Because our gospel, our doctrine is not universal. The truth we practice is the truth of Benihim. The truth we practice is the truth of Copeland. The truth we practice is the truth of... Uh, you know, some, you know, some, some, some outdated, you know, infringed gospel preachers from America. People that are not even recognized in their own country. And our own country is embracing their, 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 their health and, uh, health and uh, wealth gospel that is totally marginalized in, well, from their country where they come from. And uh, we just swallow everything because they are, they are coming from America because they are Euro uh, white Europeans or Americans. But we don't even examine the truth. We don't even know Christianity is supposed to be based on truth. We don't even try those gospels and those things on the basis of truth. Everybody now has their own truth. So there is no universalism in our truth. There is no absolutism in our truth. Number three, characteristic of truth. Number three, characteristic of truth is that truth has to be objective, not subjective. Because when you have the truth of Gio, the truth of uh, Pastor Chris, the truth of Oyedepo, the truth of Oadeboye, the truth, that is, obje that is subjective truth. But when it's the truth of the word of God, it has to be objective. That's why even Jesus himself said he cannot do anything against the truth. He can only testify to the truth. Jesus cannot make the truth to become, you know, subjected to himself. He cannot bend the truth. He cannot change the conditions of the truth. He has to only submit to the truth. But in our continent now, everybody is too big to submit to anything. Nobody can submit to anything. They would rather bring their own truth and cause you to submit to it. Number four characteristic of the truth. Is it number four now? Number four characteristic of the truth. Truth must correspond with reality. So how is it corresponding with reality when they are telling you a human being that is carrying the image of, and the likeness of God to be bowing, to be, to be using handkerchief to get healing? 
or to be using you know you know and, uh, you know oil or water or uh, coconut or you know they don't correspond with reality how can they tell you that you get breakthrough without working without you know get something for nothing that doesn't correspond with reality how can they tell you that somebody is here today that you know your enemy will die when god said that you know you should love your enemy how would they be here so they said that before the end of this month somebody will get a million or will become a millionaire those things correspond we don't become a millionaire without you know become without yeah, without setting up businesses Somebody said, don't call names. I'm going to call names. So if you don't like, we could leave my platform. I'm going to call names because it is by calling names that people will know what is wrong. I'm not just going to take, take, preach some theory and nobody knows what we are talking about. I'm going to talk about what I'm, I'm going to name. Anybody that is angry that I call their name, let them come and prove to us that I'm wrong. Let them come and prove that I am wrong. Let them prove to me that they know what truth is. And that they are allegiance to the truth. Because if I don't call the name, you will not know who I'm talking about. You will keep on going to those churches, being deceived. And thinking that they are gods or deities. The next characteristic of truth is... Truth, I've said truth must correspond with reality. But truth is always based on God. On God's personality. But in my country today and my continent, truth is based on the man of God. On his word, on his revelation, on his vision. Next point. Truth is always applicable to the life of anybody. Anybody can apply that truth anywhere in the world. If it is truth, it is applicable in the life of any individual. But the truth we're having, is when they will come with some revelation and only two or three people will come and testify. They will be using the testimony of 10 people in a church of 10,000 and everybody will be hoping, ah, it's not my turn yet. I don't know. They will say, ah, they, you know, they will say, other oh, people are getting, you don't have faith. If it is truth, it will be applicable in the life of everybody the same. It's not that you need to say, okay, it's just 10 people that you have already arranged that is working for 10 people, then you say it's true. Give, it shall be given to you. So why is it not working for, for you yourself? Why should I have to give to you? You give to me now so that I don't need to gather offering for you. Because it is not, it is not personal. It is not an you know, applicable truth that they are preaching. Their doctrines don't, 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 don't apply with real life. They don't correspond. Next point. Truth is knowable. If you have the truth, eh? You will not be saying you have some doctrine, you have some secrets, and you have some mysteries, that it is you who has the mystery. If it is truth, you will be able to train everybody to do exactly what you are doing. You will not be Superman. You will make yourself irrelevant, unnecessary. You will be able to make everybody to do the same thing you are doing. If you cannot make everybody to do the same thing you are doing, it is manipulation. It's wago wago or whatever they call it you have. Not truth. Wago wago? Magu magu? Magu magu? Yeah, it's magu magu revelation we are having. It is not truth. Truth is knowable by all. So nobody will be running after you to pray for them. Nobody will run, be running after you to bless them. Nobody will be running after you to give them, you know, anointing or breakthrough. If it is the truth that you have, you will be able to empower everybody with that truth and everybody will be able to walk in that truth without running after you or coming to your church on Sunday. Now, let me prove to you that our churches in Africa are based on lies and paganism and that we don't have truth in the african church there is no absolutism of truth i'm going to give you 15 points before i finish to prove to you that our doctrines and our christianity in africa is being compromised we are just practicing paganism that is that is uh, decorated very well number one how can we say that we are christians in nigeria when we we tell people that they still need protection that would they need people need to come for protection people need to come for to fortify themselves in nigeria today in and in africa today every christian is going to church to be protected so that god will protect them so that satan will not catch them or so that witches and wizards will not catch them so that enemies will not destroy them which is not the truth the truth of the word of god in according to first john chapter 5 chapter chapter 5 verse 4 the bible says that he that is born of god overcomes the world 
He that is born of God overcomes the world. If we believe in the truth and if we practice in Christianity that is based on truth, that truth alone is enough to set free all my people and all my continent for them to know that as long as I'm born of God, I don't need to be running away from Satan. I don't need to be running away from enemies. I don't need to be afraid of wishes and wizards. But in all those churches, because they have not preached the truth, because they are preaching paganism and lies to people, people are still afraid of enemies. People are still afraid of, you know, Satan problems because they don't even know that once they are born of God, they have already overcome. Truth has been eradicated from most churches in Africa. And I'm sad about it. And I'm sad about it, okay? And I'm sure God himself is sad about it. The Bible says, in 1 John 3, verse 8, that for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested to destroy the work of Satan. To destroy all works of Satan. Say the Son of God has been manifested to destroy all the works of Satan. But in my churches today, in the churches of my continent today, they don't tell them that the works of Satan has already been destroyed. They don't tell them that the work of Satan has already been destroyed. They tell them to come to the men of God so that they, are, they will be they will destroy the work of God, the work of Satan for them. They tell them that Satan is running after them. They don't tell them the truth because there is no truth in our pulpits today. Next point. It, where is truth in Nigerian church today? When we are, we are teaching our people to pray against enemies. When Jesus himself, who is the truth, had said that you have heard that you should hate your enemies. But I say to you, pray for your enemies, bless your enemies, love your enemies. Where is the truth? And some men of God, all the men of God are praying against enemies. And you say you are practicing Christianity? Don't you deceive me, gentlemen. Nothing like Christianity where you are praying against your enemies. You are supposed to bless your enemies. You are supposed to pray for your enemies. You are supposed to love your enemies. Not, not pray against your enemies. That is not Christianity and there is no truth in that kind of church. That is paganism. Another reason, another fact that shows that we don't practice Christianity in Africa is the concept that, that you shall not suffer the wish to live. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Yes, that is written in the Old Testament. But in that same Old Testament, Jesus has already cancelled it. Because in the Old Testament where he talks about the witch, thou shalt not suffer the witch to live. It's in that same Old Testament when he said that you have heard. Jesus changed it. And he said you have heard that you should not, you know, eye for an eye. That I must go for an eye. If somebody remove your eye, you must remove their eye too. And tooth for tooth. If somebody remove your teeth, kicks you and, and you know, I mean, punches you, remove your tooth. Tooth for tooth, eye for an eye. And enemy is the next one. No, thou shalt not suffer a wish to live. If it's a wish, you should not suffer. He kills you, you kill him. Or you kill him before he kills you. That is Old Testament. But Jesus said, you have heard that it was said like that. But now, I say to you, I, the foundation of the church, say, don't kill any wish. Oh, don't tell any wish not to some, that they should not leave. Now go and pray for that wish. Now go and love that wish. Now go and bless that wish. Now don't say eye for an eye anymore. Don't say tooth for a tooth anymore. And don't say suffer not a wish to live anymore. That is the doctrine of demons that has taken over the church of Africa. We don't know truth. Paganism is what we are practicing. We are no more practicing Christianity. Another point why I know that we are no more practicing Christianity. Truth has been removed from our pulpit. Is the fact that we tell people in our churches that there are enemies that are greater than them. Or that are stronger than them that have run after their destiny. If they are unsuccessful, it's because there are some strong men that are running after them. If they are failing, it's because of there are some strong demons or some principalities, some relatives, some you no know, wishes and wizards that are after them. That is not the truth. That is paganism. And that is idol worshiping. Because the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, that nothing is greater than you. Because greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. There is no enemy. There is no wish. There is no wizard that you should ever be afraid of. You should never. You should never. Be afraid of any evil altar or any evil demons. Any, there is nothing that is greater than you. 
That's the truth of the word of God. But we have not preached the truth to people. We have not preached the truth to them. If we, how can we say we are preaching Christianity? If we preach in my country that you need to pay and redeem the firstborn. What is that? What madness is that? That you need to pay for firstborn? You need to redeem firstborn and use money to pay for that? What is the blood of Jesus doing? When the blood of Jesus redeems us. When the blood, there is only one mediator between man and God, I mean God and man. Which is the, son, the person Jesus Christ. When the blood of the lamb that cries more than the, the blood of Adam and, I mean, uh, uh, no, you know, Cain and Adam, I mean, uh, whatever, Abel. Okay. The Christ higher than the voice of Abel. The, that blood has been shed. The blood of the lamb, the blood of Jesus has been shed to, for the redemption of all men. Either you are first born or second born or third born or fifth born. The blood of the lamb is redeemed you once and for all. Oh, and now people are giving money and they are doing services for the redemption of the firstborn. That is fallacy. That is the doctrine of demon. That is paganism. That is idol worshipping. And these are testament to the fact that Christianity has been eradicated in from our pulpit. We no longer practice Christianity. We are practicing the doctrines of men. Another reason why I know that Christianity has been hijacked and paganism has taken root in our pulpit. Is the doctrine that you must work out your salvation. You must save yourself. What do you call that? You must make your salvation. Make heaven. The doctrine that you have to make heaven. You must work out your salvation. You must, the, the doctrine that is based on works. That it is through works that we maintain our salvation. You know, well, work didn't bring you salvation. And work cannot maintain your salvation. It is what gives you salvation that will maintain it. It is faith. In the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith and trust in his grace that saved you. And it is that faith in him. In his sacrifice. In his death and resurrection. That will maintain your salvation. Not your works. If you begin to practice work. You are not a partaker of Christ Jesus. You lose the grace of God. When you begin to put your faith in works. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, that now there is no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because they now live by the law of spirit and life. We have spirit, we have, we, we have, we have, we, it is a law of spirit and life because in spirit we have relationship with the spirit of God. My spirit and the spirit of God, we are one. It's a law of spirit. It's no more law of works. It's the law of me and the spirit of God being one. Nothing should come between me. And that is what gives me life. But in Africa today, the doctrine that is being preached is the doctrine of what we call the law of sin and death. They are all the churches are still saying it is true. Yours. Don't sin, 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 sin. Sin consciousness. Oh, it's your sin that will make you don't go to heaven. Or you will not go to heaven. You will go to hell. Oh, don't sin today. Sin, sin, sin. Sin consciousness. And sin consciousness will only lead you to sinning. And sinning will only lead you to death. The law of sin and death only leads to death. But we are no more under the law of sin and death if you are a Christian. If you are not a Christian, yes, you are, a you are under the law of sin and death. But if you are a Christian, you are now under the law of spirit and life. Nothing should come between, between you and him. There is that Christianity. We are not practicing Christianity as long as we are believing those things. The next point that shows to me that we are not practicing Christianity is that in my country today, everybody be believes that in Hebrews... 10 25 means that you should not forsake the church building, the church services. They will, they will say, Don't forsake the assembly of thy brethren, don't forsake the assembly. But it's rubbish, there is nothing like that. That is not what is written in Hebrews 10 25. He didn't say, Don't forsake the assembly. So now that has been you know manipulated so much, so much that everybody thinks that they have to go to church. If they don't go to church, that they are backsliding. But he didn't say don't go, don't forsake church. He didn't say go to church. The Bible rather says in John chapter 4 24, is Jesus said that it's coming a time, and now the time is here when nobody will need to go to any mountain, or we even need to go to Jerusalem, or we need to go to this temple. To to look for God because a time is coming and now the time is here when those who worship God will worship him not in temples not in buildings that is built by the hands of man or by the hands of man it's not going to be a time when they say you have to find God in church or look for God in building or look for God in Jerusalem or even look for God in the temple no a time has come and the time is here already that anybody that wants to worship God will worship
worship God in spirit. One-on-one -on -one relationship. Personal relationship with God. And in truth. Truth. You remember truth? Truth. That is how we worship God. He's not through church. He's not through coming to church or not going to church. Don't let anybody manipulate you and confuse you anymore. You don't need to go to church. If you want to go to church, it will only be because your spirit is leading you to go there or because you are learning something there or you want to go to church because you want to go out and be a blessing to somebody. You want to go and encourage somebody. You want to go and be a blessing to somebody. That is why you go to church. Not because you must go to church. If you don't go to church, they will say you are backsliding. That is paganism that has been imported into our churches. I, believe, I know that paganism has taken over the church in Africa because people still preach generational causes. As long as we are preaching generational causes, we are preaching paganism. There is nothing more like generational causes because in, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 16, the Bible says Jesus has died for our cause and he has carried all causes on himself. Don't you believe any of the crap of our generational causes. The only reason why generational causes is working is because they have made you to believe in it. And, and the reason why they made you to believe in it is so that you will be coming to them for deliverance. So that you will be coming to them with your money. And they will be telling you that they are the ones who are powerful. Why are they not under generational cause? And you are under generational cause. You know, why should you be the one to under generational cause? Let them go and be under generational cause. But you are not under generational cause. Jesus has paid for your cause. Live in freedom. Live in liberty. That gospel, that is why it is only working among Africans. That gospel, that's why it's only working among, among, among people of paganistic descendants and people of African descent. But it doesn't work anywhere else. That is paganism. That is not Christianity. It, why I know that Christianity has been hijacked in Africa in African churches and you know, Satanism, this doctrine of demons have been established and paganism is what we are now worshipping in churches. It's because in, in Africa today, people tell you that if you tell people that they have to, that may you, they tell people that they have to bring some objects, inanimate objects now are now being, being given more prominence, than a more prominent position than human beings. In churches today, it is about oil, it is about water, it is about sound, it is about coconut, it is about holy water, it is about ribena, it is about, you know, all kind of objects. Inanimate objects now have taken the place of the Holy Spirit. Inanimate objects now have taken the place of God. Inanimate objects now are more elevated than the than the than the than the God that the people that God died for inanimate objects now are now the 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 objects of worship they are now more respected than the people who carry the image and the likeness of God and you know that is that is that is that is medium that is medium that is what is done in paganism you need a medium you need either a man a voodoo man and the pastors today are now become the voodoo men they are now the medium the the big medium the men of God. And the concept of the men of God is satanistic, is, is, is voodoo, because they want to have powerful men. It's all about power. And I've spoken about this, you know, this all last week. So if you could go and check that out this last week. But we don't, you know, all these objects, they are inanimate objects. They are not supposed to be our own objects of, of service to God. You know, we have to, nothing should come between you and your personal relationship between, between, you know, between you and God. Nothing must come between you and God. You must have, your personal relationship is the highest authority, is the highest your, your relationship you have. Don't let any object, any oil or any ribina come between you and God. Another point that I want to make is that it, there is something now they call pronouncements or affirmations. You go to church, everybody now wants to go to church because they don't want to start a new week without the man of God blessing them or releasing some affirmation to them. Why do you need blessing when you're already blessed? The Bible says you cannot cause what God has already blessed. God said you have already been so blessed that you cannot be caused. So why do you need to be going to church for somebody to release blessings upon you every Sunday? To be releasing affirmation upon you every Sunday? That is manipulation. All those declarations are lies. How, why is it that if they are working, why is it that Africa is not the most prosperous continent right now? Why is it that they are doing all the you know, uh, declaration upon you every week and you are still the same you are? You are? How, why is it that you have not become the, the, you are not taking over the world? 
Those are just manipulations. It's for you to be dependent on the men of God. It's for you to be beginning to look at the men of God as if they are gods on the earth. As if they, you should be looking at them. But the Bible has said, if you Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, that God blessed all this, of everything that God created, he blessed them. But when it came to the man, after God finished creating the man, the Bible said, and he blessed them. To be fruitful. You are already blessed to be fruitful. Forget about all the pray pray prayers from the men of God. You are already blessed to be fruitful. You are already blessed to be multiplied. You are already blessed to replenish. Re believe in that. And Jesus has already said it is finished on the cross. If it is finished on the cross, believe in him. Because it is only faith you need. You believe in him. The just shall live by faith. If you believe in what Christ has done for you, you don't need any of them men, witch doctors, and voodoo people that call themselves and parade themselves as pastors and men of God in Africa today. Next point. In Africa today, the Christianity that is being practiced there is having hierarchy. They let you believe that there are some men that are anointed, especially more than you. It's Nalayo. All of you are anointed. Every Christian is anointed. Every Because the Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 2, that as many as believe in him, and as many as have received him, he gave power. He gave everyone that received him, everyone that believes in him, he gave power and authority. To become the sons of God. The same as your geo. The same as your pastor. The same as your bishop. Not worse. You are not worse in it at all. You have the same authority as, Christ, as, as, your, as your pastor. So nobody, you don't have hierarchy in this kingdom. You don't need to be going to bow down to somebody to be praying for you. You don't need to be sowing your money. Use your first fruits, your money. Use it to build business for your children. Use it to build, live an inheritance for your children. Don't be giving it to some churches and to some men and women of God to bless you. That is fallacy. You are already blessed by God. Nobody is better than you. And if they are men of God, if they are pastors and they are five-fold ministers and they are five-fold ministers and they are bishop and pastors, their job is not to begin to lord it over you. Their job is to serve you and make sure that you come to their level and you are as good as them. It's not for you to be subservient to them. That is what paganism is all about. Another reason and why I know that paganism has hijacked the continent of African churches, especially the Pentecostal and the charismatic churches, is because the Bible has already told us that, you know, in Luke 10, 19, the Bible says, I give you authority to step upon serpents and scorpions and all powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. But today, the greatest commodity that is being sold in African church today is fear. Fear of the enemy, especially that church that they call Mountain of Fire. You know, they have brought the doctrine of doc, doctrine of evil, doctrine of Satan to Nigerian to Nigeria and African churches. And they are making you to be afraid of demons, to be afraid of enemies. Fear, fear. The doctrine of fear of the enemy is satanic. Because the Bible says that if you are a born again Christian, you have already been given power. You have already been given authority. The work of the pastors is to make you know that and to make you believe in that, that there is no power all, over all the powers, over all powers of the enemy. God has already given you authority and power over, over, over all powers of the enemy. And he says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. You will step on scorpions. You will step on serpents. You will step on all powers of the enemy. You will step on witches and wizards. He shall not. The only thing you need to release upon yourself is faith in it. And this is what these men of God are supposed to teach you. And instead of that, they are telling you that, no, you, they have the faith. But you come to them and then so that you will be giving them money, you will become their slave, slaves, you will be, begin to come, you know, they will be counting you as their members and they will own you and you will be working for them, taking your money to them every week and give, taking off tithes and offering to them. They will be living big and you will be crying. They have not done anything. They didn't die for you. They didn't own the authority. The same authority that God, that they are using is given to you. Don't let them manipulate you. It's pure bondage and it's pure paganism. It is not Christianity. Another point that makes me to know that truth has, has, has vanished from the church in Africa is that the Bible has said that anyone that is born of God overcomes the world. Anyone, once you are born of God, finish. You don't have any problem. 
You have been born of God, you overcome the world. You overcome, you know, you don't need any altar. All those teachings about what they call about altar, what they say about altar. That you need, they need to go and destroy the altar in your village. They need to look for your altar. Those are just manipulations of witch doctors. It is what the witch doctors used to do that they are now doing. You don't need any altar anywhere. No altar is having any authority over you. You are above every altar. You are hidden in Christ Jesus. So forget about their foolish, I mean, their, their crazy doctrines. The Bible also says that Jesus has made an open show in Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. The Je Jesus has made an open show. He has defeated all evil. All evil has been defeated. And he has made an open show of Satan and all principalities and powers for you. And he has put all of them, subjected them under your feet. Even if you are the little toe in the feet, it, everything has been subjected under you. So if everything is under you, why should you even care? You shouldn't even rem remember say, I, let me tell you the way I live. I don't even remember it. I don't even pray. I don't even pray against enemy or Satan. I don't even pray at all. I can live maybe a whole year and not even remember to pray against Satan or enemy anytime at all. Forget about it. It has been defeated. Make you enjoy your life. It is faith that you have in the finished work of Christ that gives you the victory. Not your prayer, prayer and sweating and making you to swell, to, to be smelling everywhere because you are sweating and you are sweating and you know all that. Another thing they tell people is that you know uh, you have to you know you have to you know to backslide. Look, make you then no manipulate you, Jerry. All those things, they, all those doctrine of backsliding. Oh, don't backslide. Oh, you are backslide. You are back. All those are just fear. Where there is love, there is no fear. Where there is love, there is no fear. The perfect love casts out fear. God has not given you the spirit of fear. He has given you the spirit of love. The spirit of power, the spirit of sound mind, and love. So all those doctrines that they are saying, uh, you know, you don't backslide. You will do something, little, little thing, you are backsliding. It's fear. And there is no, because if the Bible says the kingdom, if you are born again, you are already in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is already within you, finished. You are, don't, you are not backsliding anywhere. Unless you turn intentionally, you reject your faith, you walk away from Christianity, you walk away from God, you turn your back on God, then that's why you backslide. But if you are serving God, and you love God, and you have personal relationship with Him. You are, the kingdom of God is in you. He's not going to take it. You are not don't be walking under the fear of of backsliding. That is a fallacy. Check Luke seventeen twenty one. You you are already in God. God is already in you. You are already seated in the high place in the right hand of the Father. So don't be afraid of backsliding and all those things. Next one. Next point. There is another doctrine that says. That God only speaks through the fathers, not through the sons. <laughs> Manipulators. <laughs> Bandit. <laughs> As if we are living in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, the Spirit of God, the Bible says He has given us His Spirit by which we call Abba Father. And that as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. In the in New Testament, you are the son of God, the same as them. You know, don't, don't, you know, it's Romans chapter, chapter 8 from, from, from verses 12 to 14. You have Abba Father. You is your father. You Abba Father. You are, you are a son just like any Jew. You don't need to, to believe all those crap that, you know, God doesn't speak to sons. sons. He doesn't speak to children. He only speaks to fa father. So for you to hear God, you must go through them. It is all manipulation and it's paganism. It is not Christianity. And finally, today, the last point that I want to make. How can we say we are children of light and we are children of truth when we teach people in Africa never to question anything wrong in the church? The pastors have erected the plague of silence. They have, they have built a kingdom of silence, a kingdom of secrecy. When John chapter 3 verse 19 to 20 says, everything must be brought to the light. And that if we are children of light, we are not afraid of darkness. And it is the dark men that should be afraid of, of light. It is the dark men that should be running away from light. And we are light. He said, we are the light of the world. So we should, you know, the light will like, you know, anybody that is living in the truth likes the light. He will not be saying, oh, don't criticize or don't talk. Or, no, if you are living in truth, you will not be afraid of criticism. You will not be afraid of somebody talking about you. We, everything that is truth comes to the light. It is darkness that says, that wants to suppress, suppress truth. 
and want to say, oh, don't criticize, don't say this, don't bring it, don't wash the dirty linens in the, in the open, don't mention names. It is because of darkness. They have buried you in darkness and you don't even know. But truth demands light. Truth doesn't celebrate secrecy. It is not a kingdom of secrecy. It's a kingdom of truth and the kingdom of light. Wow, I think I've talked too much today. That's it for me today. I think, uh, you know, if you want to hear more about the truth, I have a whole, con a whole like I said, go to my YouTube channel. Go to my YouTube channel, Sunday Adelaide Official, and look for the, the power and force of truth. And you will see the old, the old message there is on truth is already on my YouTube channel, Sunday Adelaide Official. And for those people who say they want to come to Ukraine, when is the next program in Ukraine? You want to come to Ukraine? I have a program coming up in November. You can put it down in your calendar. November from the, when is it? From the 5th to the 12th. From the 5th to the 12th. Or you can stay longer. You can come earlier. You can stay longer. But if you want to come to Ukraine, we have a, what we call the History Makers Training. It is called HMT, History Makers Training. Go and register. And the way to register is to go to my blog. Sunday at delajablog.com. Sunday at delajablog.com. It's one word. Sunday at delajablog.com. Then slash visit. Visit. If you put slash visit, then you can register there and we'll be waiting for you. Anybody is welcome. Either you're a minister, you're a pastor, full time minister, or you are just an ordinary believer. You know, you know, just go and register. Sunday at delajablog.com. Uh, that is my blog. You know, we'll be happy to see you, but I will be black tomorrow exposing the works of the enemy in the church in Africa, exposing paganism and bringing back the truth of God to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being with me today. Have a wonderful evening. Uh, I want to, I'm sorry, by the way, let me tell you something else. I told you that there is a video that I'm releasing. I, it's going to come out right now after the teaching now. It's called uh, a video I got to my friends. Please don't cry for me is the name of the video. Please don't cry for me. Please go and look for it. Uh, to my friends. It's going to be out now. It's called To My Friends. Please don't cry for me. It's just 20 minutes, yeah? 10 minutes video that I've, I, I, I want you to help me spread. Let us begin to, you know, pay, uh, post that video four times a day. I want you people to commit to posting that video four times a day. Uh, and then go and share this video as well. If you have not yet shared this particular video, please go and look for your share button. Share the video. Spread the word. Let freedom and liberty set the African church free. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Bye.